Hello guys, welcome again to another section of BMD Tutorials. Today we are going to look at the preparation of the Trading and Profit and Loss account. When you are giving a question or when you meet a question in the exams hall or you are solving a question regarding to Trading and Profit and Loss account for a sole trader, what you are going to do or what the first thing to consider is you are going to use the information that will be given to you in the trial balance. And also, you are going to consider the additional information that comes with the question or that comes in addition to the trial balance. So with this, you are going to consider some information that you need to prepare the trading and profit and loss account. And remember, we are preparing the trading and profit and loss account. We have two methods that we prepare. We have the horizontal method and the vertical method. But today, we are going to consider the horizontal method. And for the horizontal method, it presents itself like the T form or the T ledger. So we have it like this. And remember, the first, the first thing to know is the heading. The heading, you put the name or the, um, the organization in which you are preparing the final accounts or the income statement for on top of the heading. Then you put the heading, trading and profit and loss account for the year and the, then you put the date. So you can see I have put three dots here, meaning you can be asked to prepare in each, um, any month or any ending of accounting period, then you state or you put down the period or the end of the date in which you are asked to prepare. So we are going to look at that. And without wasting much time, we are going to look at what are some of the information that you need to prepare the trading account. Right. So. The first thing to know, to know or to check out from the trial balance or the question is the opening stock. You start with your opening stock. And remember, I put the currency in two columns. So you have, I'm dealing in Ghana cities currency. We have the first column and the outer column and the inner column. When you go to this side, you have another same way as this. And what we mean by these two columns is, we put any amount or any entry that we put here, we record here, which there is no adjustment to be made on that in the inner column. Then if we have anything to make any adjustment on, we put it in the outer column. So let's start. We have, let's say we have opening stock. In the question, you will see this opening stock in the trial balance. You will see the opening stock in the trial balance. So you take this opening stock from the trial balance and you bring it, let's say we have the opening stock to be 10,000 Ghana cities. 10,000 Ghana cities. After recording your opening stock, then you add your purchases or your next purchases. And the purchases comes in maybe at the beginning of the accounting period, this opening stock that you see happens to be the previous accounting period closing stock. And as they are carrying forward or they are bringing this to this accounting period, maybe this goods or this stock may not be enough to meet the demand of the customers. So you need to go and purchase more in addition to this. Right. So when you purchase, you add, let's say we have add purchases. purchases and the purchases it comes with a space which needs to be included in the purchases amount so we put the purchases that is what i said when there is any adjustment to be made on the entry that you put put it in the outer column right so we have let's say the purchases to be five thousand five thousand ghana cities then what we add to the purchases is when you purchase the goods from your suppliers you need to incur some expense or cost to, uh, to get the, the goods or the stock from the supplier or the creditor or whoever, wherever you are purchasing the goods from to your destination. And if there is any or there should be any expense ar arise to that, we call it carriage invoice. When you carry the goods, carriage invoice. And this carriage invoice, you add it to your purchases amount. Right. So we have purchases, then we add our carriage invoice. So carriage invoice also will be in the question. 
then you consider that. So that one will give you 5,500 Ghana cities. So we have 5,500 Ghana cities. And with this 5,500 Ghana cities, which is giving us our total purchases amount, when you receive the goods and you need to return some of these goods back to the supplier, then you have to take it out of the amount that you have here. Meaning that you receive the goods and maybe some of the goods may be as fault or does not meet your requirement or whatever the case may be, you, you need to return. And if you are in returning, you take out that amount. So we have less returns outwards. Either returns outwards or purchases returns. And that amount gives us 1,000. And I can decide to put this in bracket to deduct from that. And when you take this 1,000 from 5,500, we get 4,500. 4,500. And this 4,500 that we have is our net purchases for the period. It's for net purchases for the period. So 4,500. And when we add your net purchases, to your opening store, you get what we call cost of goods available for sales. Cost of goods available for sales. And we call it in short COGAS. COGAS. So we have 10,000 plus 4,000, that is 14,000. 500 Ghana cities. So you have your cost of goods available for sales, which is your opening stock plus your net purchases. Right. So when you, when you are asked that, how do you get your cost of goods available for sales or COGAS, it simply means you add your opening stock and your net purchases. Right. Then we look at the next step from here. When you are done or when you get your cost of goods available for sales, the next thing you should consider is your closing stock. And the closing stock, you have to check from the additional information. You wouldn't find the closing stock in the trial balance. So that is why I'm saying when you are preparing the trading and profit and loss account or the final account, you need to be considering the trial balance information and also the additional information. So you take the closing stock from that additional information then we say less, less closing stock. So we are going to less our closing stock from this, and we said the closing stock for the period is 3,000 Ghana cities. Right. So when we take out our closing stock, which is 3,000 Ghana cities, from the cost of goods available for sales, we end up getting, the, I think we'll get 11,500. And this 11,500 is our cost of goods sold. You have your cost of goods available for sales. At the end of the period, you were not able to sell all the goods. You had some of the goods left unsold. So you have to take it out of the goods, the total cost available for sales for the, at the beginning of the period. Then you take your goods left unsold from that and you end up getting your cost of goods sold. So this becomes your cost of goods sold. And sometimes, this cost of goods sold is also known as cost of sales. But it's cost of goods sold when there is wages in the question relating to the, to the trading section or relating to the trading part. And the trading section is prepared separately to determine the profit made for the goods purchase and selling. Right, you purchase the goods and then you sell to determine your profit for how much you made for the uh, buying and selling. Just that, right. So when you get your cost of goods sold and there is wages relating all, we have to include some wages to the trading section, meaning that the goods that were purchased, the goods that were available for sales, 
it weren't in good condition for uh, for selling. So you needed some extra well, laborers to work on the goods to get it proper or to get it in good condition for selling. So this extra uh, labor that you, you hire or you incur wages on, you'll be added to your cost of goods sold to determine your cost of sales. So we add wages. And in this, sometimes it may be given to you wages and salaries, which is an expense. It will be given to you in the question to charge a certain portion of percentage from that which relates to or which will be added to your cost of goods sold to get your cost of sales. So we have add wages and our wages we have it to be 500 Ghana cities 500 Ghana cities and please take note when you, you have your um, current invoice added to your purchases amount then you get your, pay, your total purchases amount from here if there is any stock drawers by the owner please you take it out from this but this, we don't have anything like stock drawings. That is why I didn't include here. But remember, check it in the question. If there is any stock drawings, you take it out of this before you take your less, uh, you take your returns outwards or purchases returns out also to get your net purchases. Right. So it's very simple on that. Then we add our wages. When you add the wages to your cost of goods available for sales, which is giving us twelve thousand. Then this amount becomes our cost of sales now. Our cost of sales. Right, so now we have our cost of sales. When you have your cost of sales, the next thing is you go to this side and prepare, we have your sales. Sales for the period, and you said we have the sales to be 30,000. 30,000 Ghana cities. That's the total sales for the period. And at the end of the period, we had sales returns or returns invoice by customers that we have already sold goods to. So when they return some of these goods to you, for whatever the reason may be, for you return some of the goods that you purchased to your suppliers, it may have this, it may happen the same reason where your customers may also return to you. But when you receive, you deduct from your sales amount. So we have less sales returns or returns inwards so when you see return inwards in the question it's same as sales returns when you don't see returns inwards and you see sales returns it means the same you did that from the total sales amount and the sales returns is 4,500 4,500 so we have 25,500. So this 25,500 that you have as your net sales or turnover. So you have this 25,000 as your turnover or net sales. And in determining your profit for the trading section, you take your or you compare your cost of sales to your net sales or you deduct your cost of sales from the net sales. So we have net sales or turnover for the period. So you subtract your cost of sales from your net sales to drive or to get your gross profit. So when it happens that your net sales is higher than your gross your cost of sales, then you have your gross profit. We have gross profit, and the difference is um, twenty-five thousand five hundred minus twelve thousand will give us thirteen thousand five hundred. Then we balance the trading section, and in balancing the trading section, it should be on the same line. So we have now twenty-five thousand five hundred Ghana cedis. 25,500 Ghana cities. Right, so we have balance of the trading section.
And this gross profit that we put here, we call it, it is a profit, but why are we calling it gross? We are calling it gross because this income or the sales amount that we have as our income, there are some other expenses that is relating to or that made us regenerate this income, this total sales or net sales. So we are going to charge those expenses or deduct those expenses from the net sales or the income. And that is why we are calling it gross. It grows because there are some other expenses that need to be deducted. Right. So we have we call it gross profit and say C D, which is gross profit carry down. And we bring it down to the preparation of the PL or profit and loss which is the continuation of the trading account because we prepare it in one. We have trading and profit and loss. So we are done with the trading section. We prepare the profit and loss account in continuation of that. So we have gross profits brought down. So we have it here as carried down. Then we have brought down to the 13,500 Ghana cities. So this 13,500 Ghana cities as your income, now we are going to list all our expenses or indirect or overhead expenses against this profit to determine our net profit. But for the sake of time, we are not going to consider that one for now. And in our next tutorial, we are going to look at that. So this is the preparation of the trading section out of the trading and profit and loss account. And when you meet your question, please take your time, read through the question, and just pick out or figure out this information that you need to prepare the trading section. Then you continue with the profit and loss account. So please keep in touch and keep following so that you please do subscribe also so that anytime we drop a new video or the tutorial, you don't miss out anything. We are going to continue from the um, continue the profit and loss section with this same gross profit brought down. So please take note and keep this balance or this amount so that we continue with our gross profit or the profit and loss section. In our next tutorial, we are going to look at that. And it's very simple. So keep practicing and remember to leave the comments in the comment section. Anything that you want us to I mean, check in or you don't understand, you have any question, drop it in the comment section and I'll be very grateful and I'll reply to you as soon as possible. Until we meet again, stay blessed and stay safe.